This is your host, Sapna Bharti, and welcome to our special series of interviews for the LF Energy Spring Summit 2021. And today we have with us once again Jason Shefford, Vice President of Ecosystem at Zadida. So let's talk about Zadida a bit. I mean, I, we have covered Zadida to our audience, no, but I want to hear from you. So Zadida is uh, focused on orchestration for distributed edge computing. And, and by distributed edge, we mean compute that's from the fringes of the data center, you know, on-prem to out in the field. Could be on a wind tur in, a, in a wind turbine, could be on a manufacturing floor, could be in a truck. Very different considerations from what you would see within a centralized data center. Hardware and application, or orchestration and management. If you look at the energy sector, it's still, it itself is changing. It's no longer, you know, the old age because now the, the amount of energy we are consuming in, <laughs> is massive. We do talk about cloud downtime, but if your power is down, we saw what happened in California, everything is down, which, I mean, there's a new kind of stress there. There are other challenges when it comes to just how you transmit power from, I mean, there are a lot of hardware, what kind of wires and, you know, that you're using. But let's talk about uh, substations. We are not talking about windmills, which are already using IoT and Edge and Kubernetes. Let's talk about how things are changing. Talk about some of the macro trends that you are seeing in this space, which is kind of demanding, uh, you know, new solutions, and which also leads toward uh, open source solution, white boxes instead of black boxes and proprietary solutions. So it's a big broad topic, but let's start there. Yeah, I mean, like you said, renewable energy is a newer space. So there's there's less regulation. There's also just not the legacy infrastructure. So we're definitely seeing, you know, a lot more you know, intelligence already deployed there. You know, it's still there's still a lot of work to be done, but it's just different than you know classic utilities. I mean, being in Texas, I know firsthand some of the issues with the grid. I mean, uh, last month, you know, if, if you hadn't heard, like we had a the polar vortex that came through and, and basically the power grid in Texas was, uh, there was a lot of blackouts all over the place, but also the power grid in Texas, the story was it was a minute and a half from completely failing, you know, based on the, the Hertz levels within the, um, within the grid. And, and had that happened, it would have taken weeks to get it back online. And and so th there's a lot of legacy infrastructure, but then the macro trends, you know, that the utilities are facing is, you know, this whole shift to electrification, you know, because there's more consumers that are producing energy with solar, um, you know, storing energy with batteries, that completely reverses the, the power flow in the grid, which it wasn't designed for. And you have to plan, you know, somehow for the changes, because they're not constant, these sources. And so there's a lot of challenges within the utility grid today, and and you know the the legacy infrastructure makes it especially challenging. So what you're seeing happening in the in the market, um, you know, is this this move towards more open collaboration as to how do we go address these macro changes? And this is a key point of LF Energy from a standpoint of let me provide a vendor neutral place where you can come together. Maybe you know a lot of the utilities aren't used to this open you know kind of source collaboration. It's just a different mode but come together, um, drive standards through that collaboration, including on code, and see if we can address some of these macro challenges and help the, help the utilities transform themselves as, as they need to over the coming years. What role are you playing, not only at the foundation, but also within the ecosystem as well? You know, our foundation, Zadita, uh, as a solution, we leverage uh, EVOS from LF Edge, you know, a sister project, umbrella organization within um, the Linux Foundation. And, you know, think of EVOS as, uh, the Android of the Edge, a very opinionated stack uh, for the foundation of Edge hardware that um, you know has a lot of capabilities to not only support legacy workloads like virtual machines, you know, be able to run um, existing Windows-based apps, etc., but also support modern workloads like containers and Kubernetes clusters and, and things like that. And so EvoS you know, for a lot of industries and especially energy, we've got this transition from legacy to modern happening. We're working with LF Energy in terms of how we can um, put EvoS into the reference architecture with all the projects that are happening within that broader umbrella uh, as this universal base um, that helps provide that secure security, the transition from legacy to modern, um, you know, a lot of extra capabilities through that open foundation. In the broader scheme of things, what EVOS, you know, I mentioned the Android of the Edge, is it's creating a network effect with an ecosystem of providers, not only open source, but also commercial providers that can attach applications to EVOS. 
And then since EVOS is a, a universal option in terms of support for legacy and modern and all these extra features, um, it creates a, a bridge to hardware below, you know, just like Android. It's got, you've got the Play Store for all these apps, and then you've got these device makers that are unified below. And then stacks like EdgeX Foundry or Fledge, and now there's Fledge Power within LF Energy, any kind of, you know, Azure IoT Edge, Greengrass, you name it, Kepware, all run on top. And you don't have to think about that hardware, which removes massive complexity for any market. But in, in energy, as we're, we're trying to transform, it's important you know, to have these open tools that enable you to focus on your problems versus reinventing the base. Talk about uh, how these open source technologies are being embraced by the ecosystem. Definitely, as we talked about, renewable, uh, we saw some of the initial traction. So you know, Evo S running on hardware is, is currently deployed in wind turbines uh, out in the field. They're using um, actually audio data to, to listen for changes within the, the nacelle in that turbine, uh, and that kind of indicates potential failures. So that's an example in renewables. Um, we're working with providers that are doing demand response you know, in the field uh, for, for energy. So today, a utility that, that might deploy some infrastructure, you know, today actually a utility calls like a building and saying, hey, is it okay to shut off power for two hours? Like literally calls. We need to automate this and build that intelligence into the grid uh, for all the reasons mentioned. So they might put a box, a uh, piece of hardware on-prem sitting right above all the controls for the energy within that building. Well, today, they, they well, A, it's just complex. B, a lot of them run a like dedicated T1 line out to that building. And that costs like $300 to $1,000 a month um, with cellular backup. And the way we've architected EVOS, for example, it enables distributive firewall capabilities to where we can even, you could rerun on the IT network within that building and guarantee that the, the data that's supposed to go back to the utility is routed directly to that utility. That applies in micro microgrid applications, um, you know, all kinds of different you know, uh, applications within the, the energy space. The last thing I'll say is substation automation and substation virtualization is a major trend. Um, but here's where there's a lot of also concerns around um, you know, security. You know, if a substation gets broken into, you know, bad things happen. You can take down an entire grid, as you mentioned, uh, compared to like the internet. Sorry, you can't get to your email. Um, and and here there are a lot of concerns. There's 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 some some legacy thinking. There's very valid concerns. Um, one of the things that we're doing is cloud orchestration, but the data can stay on prem. So there's there's an education that I think needs to happen in the market around. These solutions can be secured. You have to follow very robust zero trust security you know, practices. And if you keep the data on-prem, it's okay. Uh, even if you manage from the cloud uh, because it, it gives you a scale factor. And so I think that's another reason why LF Energy is important because it provides a forum to not only collaborate on code, but also share ideas around what's the, the, the appropriate way to transform Maintain the security, maintain the uptime, you know, the privacy of your customer data, your IP as a utility, but but move to a hybrid model that enables you to do all the things we've been talking about um, and, and transform your business because you, we have to. We have to uh, improve how the grids work. Uh, we were just talking uh, with a utility uh, uh, outfit out of Australia yesterday, and, you know, their grid is, is very uh, uh, fragile and, and fragmented. Um, I remember... Uh, you know, I was at a, an event that we hosted um, years ago, and and you know these partners were coming up, and one one person comes up and says, "Hey, we're using IoT to to get the last five percent out of our energy grid." Then a guy from Philippines got up and said, "I just want to have power," <laughs> you know. So it's like the needs across the market are even very different depending on where you are. So just it's super important to collaborate, you know, openly on on the basics. Right. Um, let's just uh, change the gear and talk specifically about the upcoming event. Tell me a bit about how is the data per, uh, participating at the LF Energy Spring Summit? Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm presenting. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, of course, the value of EVOS as part of the reference architecture. We've been working with the team and, and um, you know, collaborating with companies like OSIsoft and RTE that are very active, dynamic, very active within the, the community. Um, 
you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the journey of, of you know, what we did with Edgex Foundry. You know, this notion of, you know, starting from scratch. And I think it just hit 7 million downloads. You know, probably the last time we talked, uh, you know, uh, about a year and a half ago when we were in Antwerp, I think it was 300,000 downloads. And basically in, in a year, it, it went to 6.7 6 million more. And how do you how do you do that? And it's about this network effect. So I'll talk a little bit about that as well. It's just just the experience that that we've had in that community and 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 why open collaboration can really help you accelerate the foundation so that you can do more, you know, in, in when faced with these types of macro trends. Uh, so uh, of course we will be looking forward to your uh, your talk your session there. What are the other sessions or talks that you are personally interested in, or you would recommend us? to look out for? I mean, you know, I think, you know, overall it's, it's, I mean, there's a lot of good, good content, um, you know, talking about the reference architecture, what, what LF Energy is doing on the whole is, is specifically, you know, interesting to us, you know, how do we go address, um, you know, the, the, these macro challenges. Uh, we're very interested in, in the CPATH project as part of LF Energy. Um, there's actually uh, a complementary um, you know, a set of capabilities between EVOS and, and the CPATH project. Uh, you know, CPATH is very focused on substation you know, automation and, and the certifications required with that. Um, whereas EVOS, you know, we're talking about it as more of a, um, a general purpose. Um, you know, I think there's some, there's some really good sessions from some of the industry, you know, experts like within RTE and whatnot, and kind of hearing their perspective, I think is important because, you know, they're, they're approaching it in a very you know, kind of progressive fashion, but even then going back and having to educate their own uh, internal organizations. And so a, a lot of, I think, the conversations within the summit, um, you're going to see that that tension between, you know, the need for open source collaboration and the concerns that you're seeing, you know, within the broader, you know, space, you know, based on just a lot of, of legacy out there that, um, you know, we, we got to find that right balance. Can't disrupt the, the, the system, but we do have to evolve. Awesome. Jason, thank you so much for once again taking time out and talk about uh, this. And as I said, I would love to have you again on the show to learn more about Zerida. And a lot, there are a lot of you know, topics that uh, I want to discuss with you, uh, not only in the energy sector, but also in the edge space. So thanks for your time today and uh, have a great day. Yeah, great. Thank you. Maybe next time I'll play a tune or something. <laughs> <laughs>